And then we're going to start to look at equations that come in quadratic form, which means that one of our trig functions will be squared. And we're first going to talk about the square root method. So if we think about this in terms of how we would have thought about it in algebra, well, let's look at the cosine function as being like y. And since it's squared, we'll think about it as y squared. And this would be a quadratic equation without a linear term. So we have the quadratic term, so we have the function, we have the term where um, the variable is squared, and then we have the constant where we're missing the, what we call the linear term. In this case, we would get the number, all the numbers on one side, and we would get y squared by itself and take the square root of both sides. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to add 1 to both sides. And then divide by 4. So we want to get the numbers on one side, and then we want to isolate that trig function squared on one side. As soon as we isolate that trig function squared, then we want to take the square root of both sides of the equation. So now we're left with cosine x. So that's my goal is just to get the trig function to the first power by itself. And when we take the square root of both sides, we want to make sure we put in the plus and minus. Square root of the top is 1, square root of the bottom would be 2. So we're looking for all solutions of this equation. So all possible solutions. We're not given a specific interval. And we're going to give the answers here in radians. So which quadrants are we going to be looking in? Well, we're looking for quadrants that have a positive cosine value, which would be quadrant 1 and quadrant 4, and also a negative cosine value, which would be quadrants 2 and 3. So we're looking for all angles that have this cosine value of positive one half and negative one half. And remember on our unit circle, that would be the pi over three family, where x, that x value is one half. So that's our pi over three reference angle family. So in, so this is our pi over three reference angle, and we have pi over three going into each quadrant. So remember, reference angles have exactly the same cosine value, plus or minus, depending upon what quadrant that we're in. So we want to find all of that pi over 3 family. So that would be x is equal to pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. Now we're looking for all possible solutions, not just the ones on the unit circle, but in that interval. So in order to find all possible coterminal solutions, we could add 2 pi n to each of these. But that might not be the most efficient way to do it. Now the angles are not equally spaced starting at 60 degrees. Um, if I go to 120, those are 60 degrees apart. But then from 120 to 240, those are 120 degrees apart. So there's not a quick way to get from the first angle to all four of the rest. But there is a fast way to get from 60 to 240, and then back to that point, a coterminal angle at 60. These are exactly halfway around the circle from each other. They're exactly 180 degrees apart. And we're talking about radians, so to get from 60 to 240, or to get from pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3, all I have to do is add pi. So we are going to represent all possible solutions in a more concise way by saying pi over 3 plus, and then it will add multiples of pi. So to get from pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3, I can do that very efficiently just by adding multiples of pi. Now how do I get from 120 to 300? Well, we would add 180 degrees. So I can say 2 pi over 3 so the smallest of those two, and then we'll add just multiples of pi. 
So the most efficient way to represent all possible coterminal solutions to the four that we found on the unit circle would be to start with the smaller of the two that are halfway around the circle from each other um, and then add multiples of pi. Start with the smaller of these two that are halfway around the circle from each other and add multiples of pi. And if we think about this equation in algebraic terms, we can think about tangent as being like, let's say, y squared. So we would have something like y squared plus 3 equals 0. And if I was solving for y, once again, we have a quadratic term and a constant term, but we do not have a linear, a linear term. So we can actually use the square root method in order to solve. So we want to get... We want to subtract 3, we want to get tangent squared by itself on one side. And then we'll take the square root of both sides, and that leaves us with tangent x, so tangent to the first power of x, equals, well, plus and minus the square root of negative 3. Well, if we think back to our algebra days, the square root of a negative number would be an imaginary number. So we can think of it as the square root of minus 1 times the square root of 3, and the square root of minus 1 we know is i. Well, this would mean that we would have to have a tangent value of some angle give us an imaginary value. We have no imaginary tangent value, so this particular equation has no solution.